Welcome back to Worn Out Racing and I guess the first episode of the 899 Turbo build. That's right, in the last episode I announced I was going to be building an 899cc turbo engine to go in something. I don't know what yet. Um, I will say that I have been personally attacked for my inability to finish projects. Uh, and you'd be right. Uh, I do I sometimes have this knack of coming up with ideas and I don't always see them through just purely because I come up with a lot of ideas. Sometimes I'm just thinking out loud. Sometimes I have every intention of doing it and then something comes up I hadn't planned for. Sometimes something else comes up. My brain works in mysterious ways. Now, I don't want that to be the case with this. Um, anyone who's watched the channel long enough knows that I do finish some projects. Obviously the lemon is basically finished, although it's kind of like a rolling thing that I do. The turbo project was a six year build. I pretty much finished. Uh, the slug was finished as well. I did the uh, the silver Sigeno. That went out the door. So I'd like to think that my track record isn't that bad. But what we're doing in today's episode, now, as I'm waiting for parts to turn up, it doesn't make any sense to just start bolting stuff up to this engine without knowing that it's at least all right. Now I know this engine's done 125,000 miles at best. I'm pretty certain that's what it was on when it came out of the lemon. So that means it's done some mileage, but I don't mind because this engine absolutely is gonna be like a test bed for the turbo. I'm not gonna try and blow it up, but for sure, it's good to have an engine out of a car to mock everything up, get it all set up, get it all ready, so that I know that when it comes to dropping this into something, I've got it all done. Now, if that engine in the car that I buy is more suited to it, a lot less miles, a lot tighter or whatever, then you can just swap all this stuff over onto it to make a nice, cleaner setup of it. So, what we're gonna do is, I think the simplest thing is we're gonna flip the camera around, stick it on the uh, bench, and I'm just gonna start taking some stuff off this, just a little bit of kind of ballpark to see whether this thing's gonna take some boost. I think it's going to be all right. These things are pretty bulletproof. There you go, some Hollywood level of uh, camera angles going on here. So I'm going to whip the old uh, engine crane a little bit closer. And we'll see if we can't get this in some sort of sensible length. Now I think the best thing we could do with this first is take the rocket cover off. Now, unlike on the uh, Trofeo engine in the Lemon, this one's got all like hydraulic tappets and stuff on there, which I'm not going to be checking. But really what I want to see is when I take this off, if you've ever seen an engine that's been well looked after, you will know what it looks like. If you've ever seen one that's been really unlooked after, you will also know what it looks like. It'll be really sort of black, gungy, and just lots of deposits and stuff in there. And it looks awful. Whereas if it's been regularly serviced and it's looking pretty good, it should be at the very least kind of like nicely golden. Everything's looking fairly clean. Even if the oil's getting a little bit old, it should be good. So that'll just give us an idea, especially we'll see if the cam's got any scoring, any of that kind of stuff on it. Then we'll drain the oil on it, flip it over, and then we'll have a look in the pan. Uh, and we'll see what end, all the bearings and stuff like that's kind of looking like. We're not going crazy, just want to make sure this thing is dead before I then make it more dead by, you know, shoehorning turbo into it. Now, I'm sure none of you need to know this, but these are all Allen key bolts on the normal sporting one, obviously. It's only just a few bolts around the outside, but on one of these, You've also got four around here as well, because again, any of you don't know these engines very well, this is the inlet. So the inlet is actually part of the rocker. It goes through here. When I take this off, you'll see what I mean. The actual inlet is just one hole right on the side of the block. And the inlet splits off then each into each one of the cylinders. So not an ideal situation for a turbo setup, but it will work. And just because you know I like to share top tips with you, get yourself something like this. I think this is like a tray out of a baby high chair or something. If you ever see anything like this where it's got little sections in it, just get one. At the very least, you know everything that's in here is to do with the project you're on. But obviously you can separate stuff off. You can like mark little boxes, whatever you want. So everything I take off this engine for the time being, I'll be binning into this. Okay, that's all the bolts off. I had to give it just a little light tap with a hammer, just a little mallet, sorry, because there's a little bit stuck on there, which may mean it hasn't been off for a long time. Let's peel this off with the gasket as well. Let's have a look. Now, that looks like it's starting to get, and do you see what I mean when I said, if you start to get this kind of black gunge up in here, that potentially means it hasn't been serviced quite as often as it would probably like. I mean, we've got to be a little bit nice here. I mean, it's done 125,000 miles. I mean, how many of these do you ever hear of that have done 125,000 miles? And I've just noticed something. As soon as I took this off, and I don't know if I remember this or not, but somewhere between this engine coming out and the other engine going in, this has lost its rocker set. You can see that there's a uh, random 
tap it sat in there, which is a, a little bit confusing. That might be a little bit of a problem. Now, I'm not saying it not having a rocker set up in there is a like a game changer, because let's face it, I could get another head for it and that wouldn't be too much of a deal. I probably could track down a set of uh, rockers for it because I'm sure one of my friends has probably got a set lying around. Um, I'm going to have to have a little think. So either we just end up using this as like a mock-up engine. So I literally do it to build the turbo manifold, build the bulb on the top, do all the extra plumbing, all that kind of stuff, and then just leave this one to one side or something. But that seems like a little bit of a shame given everything I've just said a few minutes ago. So I'm just going to have a little dig around. So what I probably will do is before I start worrying about uh, whether I'm going to replace the cylinder head or anything on it, I say that I put the rocket back on it so nothing else falls out. So all the uh, things like the uh, actual push rod itself, I don't want them landing on the floor. Um, and then we'll see whether everything in the bottom of the engine is looking okay as well. Otherwise, if this is basically a write-off, as in it looks like no good other than for parts, because I can steal some stuff off it, then we won't bother. And then I've already got another engine that I could use instead, uh, which is a much lower mileage one. So we'll go with that instead. But I think for the time being, we'll keep plowing on with this one because I think I just want to see uh, how it is before we ride it off completely. And just while I'm here, this is what I was talking about. So this is where the actual gasket seals here. That's where all the inlet goes through. And if you see, it goes round there like that. And all this piece in here will be the inlet for these two cylinders. And if you look down that one, it goes down there. And that's the inlet for these two cylinders. So this is why these don't really have a lot of scope to open this up and do all that kinds of stuff. Uh, the one on the lemon has been very slightly polished. They've took some of these edges off, kind of cleaned all this up. Now you will see in some more extreme scenarios when people turn these into like rally engines and stuff like that, when they have to keep the engine, uh, there is a thing where people will actually will drill out. They get an engineering shop to basically weld this over and then drill out each of the individual uh, runners and then build a more of a traditional kind of setup off the side it's really expensive i won't be doing it all right come on then let's see what chance i've got of getting all this oil out of there into this pan i think that we will find out shortly Glub, glub. Right, here she is, all flipped over. And don't forget, even if you think you've got all the oil out of it, still put a pan or something on there because sometimes it can all run back through. It takes a little while, but you'll come out and find a nice little puddle on your floor. Now, just before I carry on, I will continue to cuss this phone down because my wide angle lens quality on this is terrible. So I don't think I'm going to be lasting very long with this junk before I have to swap it for something else. But anyway, just going to start working our way around. There are millions of these little bolts. All the way around there so if you have your little daka daka like i have it tends to be a little bit easier to blast around with those i said we'll give it a little look if nothing else if all we end up being able to save off this engine is having a decent block with the pan and everything and i just take the head off or leave the head on it wrap it up stick it in a corner and should we grenade one at some point at least we've got old trusty <laughs> I don't know how successful it's going to be doing this one-handed, but oh, not too bad at all. This one's actually got a gasket on it. Nice. Now, I mean, I've seen worse. Not too bad. I'm having a little rummage around there in a minute, see if I can find any metal. But okay, it looks all right. It looks all right. I'm going to say. Uh, Okay, that looks, I think, like a bit of silicone, so that might be all right anyway. Nothing terrible in the, sorry, let me go back. But nothing terrible in the pickup tube. It's not like massive chunks or anything. I wasn't really expecting it to be. I mean, this thing was in use before it got swapped over for the Trofeo. Now, I said, you will see. And again, it's unfair to really pinpoint on a car that's done 120 odd thousand miles. I mean, it looks all right. I mean, no, you can see obviously their chain drive. Chains are looking in really nice condition, actually. Uh, see the cam down in there? So obviously this is a cam in the bottom of the engine for these ones with the push rods. So it's a little bit of a weird setup. Now there is one weakness on this, which my Italian man Claudio has told me that he worries me about, worries him, sorry, about me turboing one, is the crank is only bolted in three places. So on the normal 1.1 fire engine, you have four 
uh, like, uh, girdles, bearing, main bearings for the crank. And these you only have three. Now, I don't think that's going to matter. Honestly, with the amount of power I'm going to try and put through one of these, I don't think that's going to cause me too many problems. Now, I'll put the camera down. I'll have them a little rummage through this just to make sure there's nothing terrible looking. Uh, obviously, if you were being really serious, you could take some caps off just to make sure the bearings and stuff look all right. I mean, uh, you know, as a starting point, it looks OK. So we'll see. Now, another little tip for you, at least for this type of engine, is if you turn it over, which you should be able to easily, you can also take a little look down and you're going to be able to see this very well. Be able to see the actual cylinder walls for each cylinder. So you better see if they're looking super, super scored or anything horrible like that. Again, I'm not expecting them to be, be able to see it. And like I said, again, on these ones, because the cams down here, you'll be able to see if the cam is looking horribly worn or it's got a lot of heat go through it. So it's been a couple of days since the last clips that I filmed, I think. Um, I've taken a little bit more time to look at the engine. I've thought about it a little bit more and I've decided it's not worth it. This engine is toast. I just don't think it's going to be worth putting boost through it. I think it's had a hard enough life as it is. I think I'm probably just going to take some stuff off it, keep the bits that are useful. I'll definitely take the cam cover and a few other little bits and bobs like that, just in case. I might keep the block and just bin the rest of it because I need to get me a new engine for this project. Uh, and I've already found one. So I think I need to make a quick call. Good morning, one out racing's bank manager. Hello mate, it's Ben. Oh, it's you, what do you want? Excuse me, uh, I can ring you without needing something. You only ever call me when you want something. Okay. Oh yeah, you got me there, that is true. Um, well, you remember the turbo project I said I was doing? Yeah, 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 I know the one, the silly one that you came up with last week. Yeah, that one. Um, well, the engine is completely cactus. Uh, the one that I've got, it's no good at all. And I was thinking about my finances and it makes more economic sense for me to uh, buy a new one, really. So I've managed to find a uh, nice low mileage one that comes with a gearbox, a uh, manifold, uh, throttle body, all of it. So actually, I'm saving money. I mean, looking at the numbers, for once, this isn't one of your stupid ideas. So yeah, it, it probably does make sense, actually. Okay, I'm glad you came round to it in the end. But I mean, as long as that's all right, then I'll, uh, I'll put the purchase in and ask for it to be delivered ASAP. Yeah, go for it. I'll, uh, I'll put the invoice through now. All right. Yeah, well, if that's all you've got, I've got a lot to do. By the way, I bought another car. <laughs> that's right, I've bought another car and it's not an Italian. So join me soon to see the new engine and for me to reveal, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, the new motor. And no, I'm not putting a 900cc turbo in this one. That's for something else. See you soon.